Hey, welcome back to the Wood Crafter. This is the detail sander from Till's Wall. Full review coming up. About a month ago or so, a company got in touch with me, Till's Wall, T I L S W A L L, got in touch with me and said, Hey Andy, we like what you're doing on the channel, we'd like you to review some of our products. There's two products I'm going to review, today I'm going to go through the detail sander, next video I'm going to go through the rotary tool, and I'm quite excited by this rotary tool, but we'll look at that uh, another day. So let's talk about Tills Wall, they were founded in 2019, they're a Chinese company. What I like about them though is they have a really good distribution network, they're distributing across the globe, US, Europe, UK, obviously China, and they do have a very, very good website. And although they started off as an Amazon company, and typical thing, you know, bring the products into Amazon, they are beginning to scale up and branch out a little bit with their website. Their stated aim is to bring high quality products to the DIY and professional. Whether it's professional quality, we'll have a look and give some views. But yeah, I thought it was well worth having a look at. Full disclosure, obviously, this has been provided to me free of charge for this review. We're going to start by unboxing the products and seeing what we get in the kit. We're then going to look at the overall build quality and the features and specifications of the sander. I'll then put it through its paces and then we'll give an overall view of it. So let's get cracking and see what we get in the kit. So this is the detail sander. It's the model number AJ23, whatever that means. And it retails at £29.99 in the UK. It comes in this very, very simple cardboard design, so lots of recycle, and it's got some words on it. Be bold to go forward, no idea what that means. The name, picture of the device itself. 230, 240 volt AC, it's 15,000 minutes, no idea what that means. It comes with 12 pieces of sanding paper, P80, P120. It, on the back it has an address in Dusseldorf in Germany, and then it also has the Chinese addresses and obviously this is actually newly made apparently in China. Opening the box I see a lot of plastic. I see the small sander itself. I see some instructions and some spare sandpaper and a warranty card, always good to see. And a dust collector and that's pretty much it in the box. It comes with a 24 month warranty which is great to see. And to activate that you go to tillswall.com slash support or scan the QR code and you get a big surprise for logging into the web so I might have a look at that in a second. And you get a quite a nice little message here. Dear valued customer, thank you for choosing Tillswall. If you like the product you receive we'd love to hear about it. And if you have any suggestions or concerns please don't hesitate to contact our service team via email support at tillswall.com. We will be there to provide you with satisfaction and guaranteed service. Most importantly, never forget to sign up on our official site to enjoy two-year extended warranty. We have some cashable gifts for you as well. Cheers, the Tills Wall team. That's a nice little touch, I think. And you can start to see some of the things they've got in their range. They do a nice sprayer, obviously the sander, a hammer drill, a grinder, a um, some sort of saw cutter, glue gun and cleaning devices. So they've got an interesting mix of products on the website so it's probably worth checking them out. So this is the user manual, it's a sort of kind of semi-glossy cheap feeling manual, all black and white. Got a menu inside it, a couple of QA codes here so you can download the actual manual itself or some questions and answers, always useful. It's got the same in Spanish, French and Italian, uh, gives you the safety tips, it tells you what you get in the box and the key features. Uh, some specifications, 230 volt motor, 15,000 reps per minute, a hook and, look, hook and loop, sorry, fastening for the sandpaper, tells you how to clip the sandbox onto that. Um, some problem solving here, not an awful lot there, etc. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's what you'd expect, nothing groundbreaking in that lot. So with that unboxed, let's look at the features of this. This is it, it's a plastic sort of arrangement and the, the blue part is quite a hard plastic, feels like it would take quite a good knock. The black however is quite a nice soft rubberized material and it feels really really nice 
in the hand. My hands aren't super big and that fits quite nicely. I've got the on button and that's about the only features I've got. Obviously it's not an orbital sander so this is going to move backwards and forwards for you in use and it's going to do that at 15,000 revolutions per minute which is pretty reasonable I guess for this type of device. You can obviously see the vents here and inside the body you can just about make out a plastic sort of kind of white colour fan. What that fan's going to do, as well as cooling the motor, one assumes, it's going to suck dust up through these ports here and blow them out into this little dust collection device here, which is nice. Um, what else? Standard size, it's a standard size pad, so you're going to get pads for this from pretty much anywhere. They've not gone down any strange routes with that. And it is this Velcro type fastening. It comes, as we said, with some sanding paper, um, six P180s, sorry, six P80s and six P120s, and they should just in theory click to the back. Not super sticky actually, so we will check that and see what that's like in, in use. But hey, it's as easy as that to put the paper on, and obviously, you can see the holes cut in the paper that line up with those vents. Dust extraction is just pretty simple, it just pushes on relatively tight. This dust port does seem to be around about 37, 38 millimeters, so it should in theory take a standard dust extraction hose, but we'll check the Festool shortly. Not a huge capacity on the dust box, doesn't really tell us what's coming on with the dust box. This black lid clips off, it's quite tight, so you need to be careful with that I think, otherwise you're going to throw dust everywhere. Has got a filter inside, so obviously as you get the air coming through this um, connector here, it's going to filter out any dust particles. I'll check that shortly to see what it does actually filter out. And obviously there's vents on the top of the box. Not a complicated design here. The, the air is going to blow from the extractor into this port, through this tube, air will expel through the black lid and the filter and the debris will collect inside. I probably described that as functional, clips on pretty easily. Here's my Festool extraction holes and that fits on there quite nice and tight. Not too tight, not too loose, perfect fit. So that would work quite well. I just want to check the noise on this. Um, so I'll open up my noise meter, hopefully you can just see that there. So I'll check first of all for the ambient noise inside the workshop. That was coming in around about 48 ambient noise, uh, which is relatively low. That's actually quite high for my workshop, but I do have the heater on today because it's freezing. I'll now run this for a few minutes and we'll see where we get to with average noise. So that was peaking at over 100 decibels. Now that's quite loud and it's a quite a high pitched whine as well and you can really feel it vibrating in your ears. So this is a device that you are going to want to use air protection with. In terms of vibration, it wasn't overly vibratey. Um, these are always going to vibrate because obviously this pad is moving backwards and forwards at speed. Um, but I could feel it in my wrist here. So there is quite a lot of vibration from the device. Okay, I think that's probably all the features, say on off button here, no, no volume control, no speed control on this, so it is pretty much what you get. This here is my little dust monitor, measuring round about the background now, about five or six parts per million of debris at 2.5. So we'll just put that here while we're working, then we can see how good this dust extraction actually is. I've got the 80 grit here on the paper, this is an old piece of, I think it's um, ash, maybe, just knocking around the workshop, no idea. Probably not an overly fair test because you wouldn't really be using this to bring down rough cut stock, but it would be a good test because I do want to see how well this paper grips onto this. Here we go. So I probably ran that for about four or five minutes, obviously didn't put all that in the video. But you can really see the dust here is collecting on the sander, so the dust collection is not that good, and you can see it on my hands. And this, I, I was watching this as well, and I noticed on the larger particles, the 
particles. This was around about 40, which is inside the safe zone-ish. But as I got down to these smaller particles here, these very, very small, less than one micron particles, and they're the ones that really do your damage, this was really, really quite high. So this filter is taking out the large particles, but it is escaping into the air with those sort of kind of bigger particles. And you can see the amount of dust that's collecting on here. So the dust collection on this is probably what you'd expect. The paper did stick okay. And actually, as I've been sanding, it's actually sticking better than I thought it would. It's now almost as if, you know, that first use has just improved the adhesion of that pad. I'm gonna put on the finer paper, the 120, and we'll just carry on and see where we get to. This will obviously create a finer dust. So we're running about five parts per million now for the higher dust and the, uh, yeah, lower dust as well. It's all about the five or six mark. So we'll just keep our eye on that. 77, 38 on the uh, two and a half. So I'm in the sort of kind of mildly danger zone in terms of dust collection on this on the fine paper it's not really doing a good job of dust collection but having said that at this price point would you really expect it to i'm going to repeat this and i'm going to drop on the festool vacuum now because if you were going to use this in an environment you would have a reasonably quality vacuum extraction on this you can see it is collecting dust inside there uh, quite you know the larger particles but the fine particles of dust are escape escaping and i could see this filter uh, blocking up quite frequently so whether this is the, the dust collection solution for you is up to you. Now this is obviously a pretty top of the end extraction system I've got here. It's a Festool CTL 26E, a HEPA filter on it. So, you know, if this doesn't take dust away from it, this is no chance. So I'm not really expecting to see big problems here. This is settling down around about 10 parts per million on the 2.5. Um, about 5 parts per million on, on the 1 and about 15 on the smaller particle sizes here so I'm going to put the vacuum on turn this over repeat the activity so I'll come back in with a P80 grit first of all so 22 23 on the 2.5 micron about 8 on the um, 1 micron about 21 on the smaller micron and looking around the machine you can see there's no dust really escape a little bit actually but not a lot of dust escaped from the device once i've got decent dust extraction on here so i would say that if you're using it with the dust box that come with it it's okay but not okay enough and i would definitely be using some sort of mask for prolonged use but if you're using a decent extractor on here it's pretty good i mean it's not on the level of my festival sanders but it's pretty good in terms of what it takes away and what's escaping into the overall air now coming back to this Velcro, I have read reports, I went through the customer reviews on this device to see what people say, and they do say that they have problems with this pad here. I mean, that was a very, very short test, probably about 10 minutes of use, but what they've been saying is over prolonged use, it's almost as if the Velcro hooks on here soften with the temperature, and they've had problems with this paper peeling off. But I must say, I'm not seeing any evidence of that here. Uh, but just watch that. Now, I'm not sure whether Till's Wall have upgraded the pad that they're using here based on customer feedback, but this is pretty good. I mean, it feels as strong an adhesion now. I've used it for a few minutes as I'm getting on my Festival Sanders, and that's never, ever, ever let me down. But just want to watch, I think. So there you go. I can think of nothing else to say about the Till's Wall Detail Sander Model AJ23. It's a brilliant price point, less than £30 in the UK. For what you want a detail sander to do, fine sanding jobs, not great big massive jobs that I get out my belt sander, for example, I think it's a good product. Not too heavy in the hand, a little bit noisy, so I'd use air protection if I were you. The built-in box, not the best dust extraction, but the system works great if you have some sort of powered vacuum suction on here to clean it. Vibrations, not too bad. And for detail sanding, which is where you want to get into the corners of things, or you want to just work on a profile, I think it's going to be a pretty good purchase. I'd expect to buy some better quality sandpaper. I don't think this is the best. This is, uh, tends to wear down pretty quickly. But overall, yeah, I think it's a nice little product. Although Tills Wall do have an affiliate program, I've not signed up to the affiliate program, but I will leave links here so you can go along and have a look at that product 
on their website or their products are available on Amazon as well. And if you are thinking of this, just pop onto Amazon. There's some really good reviews on there that people have put about the product. Overall, it's positive. I would just say people are concerned about the adhesiveness over time of that pad. Hope you found it useful. Take care, look after yourselves. I'll see you next time on The Woodcrafter. <laughs>